Now I'm going to talk about the balance of God's grace and law. And this is a very important teaching that helps us to, you know, to live in God's grace and at the same time enjoy His love um, and be strengthened by Him. Okay, now I'm going to, sh I'm showing now the difference between motivation by the law and motivation by the grace of God. When people are motivated by the law, when they are under the pressure of the law, what happens is they are filled with guilt because they say, I, there are many things I cannot do well. And they always say, I did not pray enough, I haven't obeyed God in every area. So there's much guilt. But if they are motivated by grace, they know they are forgiven by God. When we repent, God for sure will forgive our sins. And then, number two, when people are motivated by the law, they, they are under pressure. They have to do some things. They, they think of, you know, that there's too much to do. I cannot do it well. But then when we're motivated by grace, then we, whatever we do, God is very happy. Of course, we want to do better, but we're not under pressure. And then motivated by the law, people will have a sense of failure. I don't do well enough, and they like to compare and they want to compete with other people and they are critical of themselves and other people. They say, I'm not doing so well, other people are not doing so well. But when people are motivated by grace, they say, everything I do, God is happy with me. So they, are, they have a sense of accomplishment. And also they, uh, they are willing to praise other people and appreciate other people instead of comparing and competing and try to help people. And they see the goodness of themselves and others. So uh, a lot of times we see many people live in under the law. They always under pressure. They always feel they're not good enough. So there's a lot of pressure. So we, today we talk about how to live under the grace of God. And then now we need both the law of God and God's grace. The law of God tells us what to do and tell us God's judgment and punishment. There is judgment and punishment and uh, the Bible does tell us that if we follow the flesh we will reap corruption and destruction so there is punishment uh, it does tell us it's, uh, it's a fact it's a fact that there is punishment with the law and also uh, but if people are motivated by the law then they are motivated by punishment I want to avoid punishment and then they um, I'm trying to move this a little bit so it won't block my view of the of the um, of the slide okay and then they you know the law should not be the main motivation if the law is the main motivation then people will always say uh, they always say well I'm not good enough uh, they're under pressure but God's grace tell us what God has done to bless us that he has forgiven us, He wants to bless us, He's with us all the time, and it tells us God's grace, uh, forgiveness and help. He's helping us, and, mot and uh, God's grace will motivate us by His grace and His love to follow Him. That we'll follow Him, we love Him, not because of pressure, but because of His love. And then God's grace should be the motivation. So we are motivated by God's grace to obey God's law. And we should learn to appreciate God's nature. Now in this teaching, I'm going to talk about God's nature a lot because God's nature is very beautiful. Uh, it's full of wonderful things. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, there it says that by which have been given us to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so um, that we can be partakers of the divine nature of God that we can be part of God's nature that we can show 
God's nature, that we can live in God's nature, showing His love and His compassion. Now, God's nature includes the following, His love, His care and acceptance of people. He accepts us all the time. And God's holiness, God is holy, and His holiness is very beautiful. Um, excuse me, I'm going to put in... Um, Put in a message for someone. I'm sorry about that. Okay, now God's holiness is very beautiful. Heaven is very beautiful. There is no fight, no anger in heaven. So God's holiness is very beautiful. Everything about God is beautiful. And God appreciates us. Everything we do for Him, He's very happy. And He lifts up people. He raises us up to a higher level. So God is very, uh, is a wonderful God. He always blesses us and He remembers everything we do. So it's something very wonderful. And um, And then God's wisdom. He, he has the wisdom to create the world and He has the wisdom to work in everybody's life. So His work is very wonderful. And He uh, has power and a wonderful plan and He works in all things for our good. Everything He does is for our good. Okay, I'm sorry that there is, because I, I have to be in control of everything. Okay, now this Bible verse here in Matthew 9.22, it talks about Jesus turned around and when he saw the woman, the woman with 12 years bleeding, she has 12 years bleeding and she has used up all her money. She has used up all her money and she has no hope. And the only hope she finds is to, you know, uh, go behind Jesus and try to touch Jesus in, uh, in secret and got healed and she was healed and then Jesus asked who touched me and she was very afraid because she has broken the law that she is she was unclean and she's not supposed to touch anybody so she was afraid and then and then Jesus turned around when he realized that it was her who touched him and this is what Jesus said to her be of good cheer daughter your faith has made you well now this is very wonderful because he called her daughter. Many people feel unworthy. This woman felt very unworthy. She has, you know, all kinds of problems. And also she has uh, broken the law by touching all the people in the group, in the crowd there, following Jesus. So she has broken the law and she was very unhappy. You know, she was feeling sad and afraid. But Jesus turned around and called her daughter. And she was surprised. Why did Jesus call me daughter? Now she may not be very uh, young. She could be an adult. She probably was an adult. So she could be about the age of Jesus. But Jesus called her daughter because in Jesus' eyes, everyone, every one of us is his son or daughter. So Jesus called us son or daughter. So that's his acceptance. He accepts us. And be of good cheer means that that Jesus, uh, he, he said, don't worry. Uh, be happy, be joyful, relax. Be of good cheer means Jesus care about her feeling. He knows that she was afraid. So uh, 
So Jesus tried to um, let her know that she was forgiven and don't worry, I forgive you. And the woman must feel very comforted that she was being called daughter and Jesus said to her, be of good cheer, don't worry, relax. So this is how Jesus makes us feel. Jesus makes us feel relaxed and make us feel important. We are his children. We are very important. So we don't have to worry when we come to Jesus. But many Jesus, many people come to Jesus and they think of the law only and they feel they are unworthy. They always feel unworthy and they feel they are too bad, too sinful. But Jesus wants us to feel forgiven. When we repent of our sin, we are forgiven and we can relax when we come to him. So this passage tell us that God cares about each one of us. He cares about each one of us and He calls us His children. He calls us son or daughter and He said, relax, don't worry about it. I care about you. I want to help you. And then in Psalm 139 verse 5 that uh, David said about God, you are all around me in front and in back and you lay your hand upon me. So here Jesus says that, that God, you are all around me. You are with me all the time. You are, you are uh, behind me and you are in front of me and you lay your hand upon us. That Jesus never leaves us. Now sometimes people feel, well, Jesus is far away. But the Bible tells us that He's with us all the time. He, he is uh, omnipresent. That means He is present everywhere so he's present with us all the time and he lays his hand upon us to bless us so this is give us comfort every time we come to him he always responds to us and before we come to him he's already with us and then isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. So this passage says that can a woman forget her nursing child? If a woman is nursing her child, would she forget her child somewhere? Would she forget her child on the street or in a shop? That will never happen. Any normal mother will always remember her child. So a mother will not forget her child. And so God will not forget us also. God will always, God is always with us and He wants to bless us. He always is with us all the time. <clears throat> and He, uh, He have good memories of us. He think of us all the time. He has uh, pleasant thoughts about us. When He think of us, He likes us. He wants to bless us. He, he appreciate everything we do for Him and he's very happy with us. So, so this Bible verse should help us to be positive about God, to know that he's always with us all the time. And this verse, Zephaniah 3.17, it says that he will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So here it talks about the joy of Jesus over us, the joy of God over us. Now many people think that God is very stern and uh, you know very strict and never think of God as rejoicing over us but Zephaniah 3.17 says that God takes great delight in us He's very happy with us and He'll quiet us with His love it's like uh, like a, a mother would quiet the baby with her love so He'll calm us down with His love and he'll rejoice over us with singing, that he will rejoice and sing over us. Oh, I'm so happy, I'm so happy to have you. So he would rejoice over us and sing over us. That's wonderful about God. He is a happy God. God is a happy God. He's not like people. People very often are not happy with people. Very often people get angry with people and they they don't like people and so people have a lot of anger but Jesus have a lot of joy and happiness and then Romans 8 32 he did not spare he who did not spare his own son 
but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? So this Bible, Bible verse tells us that God did not spare his own son, his beloved son that he loved so much, that he did not spare his son, did, he did not keep his son, but he gave his son to us as a free gift. So when he gave us his son, Jesus Christ, he also will give us all things together with him. Everything we need, when we love him, he'll provide for all our needs. Everything we need, he'll provide for us. For those who love him, he has prepared wonderful things for us that we don't we will not be in, uh, in shortage, that He will always bless us and give us everything. And if we love Him, He will give us resources to raise us up to a high level. Now you notice that when I look at these verses, actually when I talk about any Bible verses, any Bible verse, you, you see that I always talk about how wonderful and how loving God is. God is a loving God. God is a wonderful God. God is a a pure God. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord that He is a loving God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, at this time, I'm sorry, I think of a, a, a group. I, I want to send a message. Oh. And uh, so I hope we all yeah. think of God's grace. Always think of God's grace and then always think of how wonderful God is and then remember everything God, is, God has done. Hallelujah. God is a wonderful God. God is a, a loving God. Hallelujah. And, oh. and so when we think of God's grace that we can love Him, we can relax, we don't have to worry, we know that we are loved by God, and so we can all relax in Him. That as Christians, we can all relax in Him when we know God's nature. So I love God's nature. I always want to talk about God's nature. Okay, now, so when we know that God is so wonderful, God is so loving. So, my definition of faith is like this. Second Timothy, uh, this Bible verse, chapter 2, verse 13. If we are faithless, He remains faithful. He cannot deny Himself. Even when we are faithless, even when we don't trust in God, when we don't follow God, he is still faithful. He is faithful to keep all His promises. He always keeps His promises. He always wants to bless us. So my definition of faith is this at the bottom. What He promised, I believe. Whatever He promised, I believe. I believe everything He promised. When He works, I believe. So when He works, I believe that He, he will do wonderful things. He will take care of me so I don't have to worry. This is a greatness of grace that we can relax in Him, we can enjoy Him, we can have strength from Him. And then, now, when we have the grace of God, it doesn't mean we don't obey God. So here, here I say that we should be motivated by God's grace to obey Him. That we should be motivated by God's grace to obey Him. God's grace is to change us so that we'll obey Him. And when people are motivated by the law, it will give them pressure and fear. When people only think of, oh, I have to do this. Uh, if I don't do this, God will punish me. That is motivation by the law. Then people would have pressure. But when we live in God's grace, now when we live in God's grace, it doesn't mean that we can sin freely. It doesn't mean that we, we sin. It means that we are forgiven by God, so we are free and we can serve God because when we serve God, God is very happy. And then number three, motivation by God's grace to obey God gives us freedom and a fruitful life. So when we are motivated by God's grace to obey Him, it gives us freedom and joy and strength and a fruitful life, a life that will bear much fruit. And God is very happy with that. God is very happy that, that we are free in Him, we are rejoice in Him, because Jesus said, all you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. Jesus wants to give us rest and Jesus wants to help us to bear much fruit. So with God's grace, when we grow in God's grace, it doesn't mean that we don't obey God. It means that we obey with joy and freedom. 
Now, this is very important point. It is not hard to please God, although it is impossible to be perfect. Now, we cannot be perfect, but many people, when they think of themselves as being imperfect, they always say, no, I cannot please God. I'm not good enough. I, I have too many problems. I have too many sins. So many people think of their sh shortcomings when they think of God. But the Bible tells us that it's not hard to please God. Now, it is hard to be perfect. We cannot be perfect. We don't have to be perfect to, to please God. But we want, we want to be as perfect as possible. But we are not under pressure. That's very important. So first thing is, when we, when we sin and then when we repent, the whole heaven rejoices. That's very important. In Luke chapter 15, verse 7, it says that, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So when one person repents, um, one person repents, the whole heaven rejoices. The whole heaven rejoices. Ev everyone, God and the angels and the saints will rejoice when one person repents. So that's even when we fail, sometimes we fail, we sin, but God is very happy to accept us when we repent of our sin and ask God to forgive us, the whole heaven rejoices. So I hope that this gives us peace and love and joy and freedom. And then it's not hard to be close to God. God is not far away. In James 4, 8, come near to God and He will come near to you. So when we come near to Him, He will come near to us all the time. Actually, it's God who draws us to Him. And in John 15, verse 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. So when we stay in Him, He will stay in us. When we live in Jesus, He will live in us. So that will give us the confidence. Whenever we come to God, He's always with us. Some people say, where are you, God? Where are you? Actually, we don't need to say that. We can say that He's always with us, even when we don't pray. But when we pray, He's very happy with us and He'll for sure bless us. Hallelujah. So God is not hard to find. It's not hard to, to seek God. And then God is very happy to reward us for every little thing we do for Him. Every little thing. In Mark 9 verse 41 for whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ assuredly I say to you he will by no means lose his reward so whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name whoever gives you a cup of water to drink that uh, because you belong to Christ then he will not lose his reward so what it says here is that Whenever we do something to a Christian, because you belong to Christ, to do it to any Christian, when we do it to any Christian or we do it to anyone to try to bring him to be a Christian, then we will by no means lose his reward. He will for sure reward us and bless us. So hope that we have the confidence. Whatever we do for God, God is very happy. So it's easy to please God when we repent and when we come close to Him, when we obey Him, it's easy to please God. So every day we can say, God loves me, God is happy with me when I follow God. Now when we don't follow God, then of course God is not happy with that. But when we follow God, when we obey God and try to do what God wants us to do, God is always, always very, very happy. Okay, and then God is happy to bless us when we love and obey Him. When we love and obey Him, he is very happy to bless us. God blesses those who seek His kingdom. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Now when Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, He talks about the kingdom of God in Matthew 13, Matthew 20, Matthew 25. In all these places, when Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, He talks about the seed of His Word. His Word stay in the heart of people. When people obey God, then they will bear fruit. 
100 times, 60 times, 30 times. But when some people don't love God and then the heart is hardened, then the seed will not go into the heart. And then he talks about how Satan also planted the seed of the tears. And those uh, will, the tears will be punished by God when he comes back, when Jesus comes back. And then in Matthew 25, he talks about uh, preparing for the coming of Jesus, like the bride, uh, the wise bride, that they are ready. So he talks about the kingdom of God is being ready for Jesus' second coming and also use the talents that God has given us. The five, the one, the servant with the five talents and the two talents, they all earn five talents and two talents back. And then, and then Jesus said, come and enjoy in this, uh, enjoy the blessings I've given for you. So God's kingdom is His kingdom of grace and love and mercy and blessing of people. And when people hear God's word and obey, that's, his kingdom. So when we seek God's kingdom, what does that mean? When we seek God's kingdom, it means that we want more people to believe in Jesus. We want more people to believe in Jesus. We want to bring Jesus to believe in Jesus. And also the second meaning. Now here, right down, I wrote down here, bring more people into salvation and not let God be the king in our heart. If Jesus is the king in our hearts, then our heart becomes His kingdom. Then He is ruling our hearts. Then, so if we let God be our king and also want to bring more people to Jesus, then all these things will be given to you as well. So God will give us all everything when we obey Him and when we seek His kingdom. So this is uh, the interpretation of Matthew 6.33 according to what Jesus has said about his kingdom. His kingdom is about uh, the Word of God to bring salvation and also when people respond to God's Word and be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. But some people take the kingdom of God only to mean the millennium. Uh, Jesus actually never talked about the millennium. He only, only talked about the, the grace of God, the, the Word of God to work in people's heart and God's Word uh, to change people's life and some people obey Him and bear fruit and also one day will face judgment. The faithful servant will be rewarded and then the lazy and wicked servant will be punished. So it's receiving God's Word and be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. So this is about the Kingdom of God. And then when we seek His Kingdom, we want more people saved and we want Jesus to be the King in our heart and want to obey the commandments, then all these things will be given to us. So when we obey God, He will give us all things. So we have the, uh, the joy to obey God and love God when we have the grace of God. Hallelujah! And also 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor eye, uh, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. So when we love God, God has prepared for us things that our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard, and it has not entered our heart that we have not thought of these things that God has prepared for us. So when we obey God, that He will prepare for things that we never imagined. So this is how wonderful God is. Whenever we obey Him, we follow Him, He will bless us with everything. He will bless us with Everything we need, God is a wonderful God. God is a loving God. God is a, lo a God of mercy and kindness and goodness. Hallelujah. So we have the confidence to obey Him all the time. Praise you, Jesus. And then also, we receive the spirit of sonship, not the spirit of a slave. Romans 8.15 For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Now many people live under the law and they always have, they always have fear and worry and, and competition and criticism and all these negative things. But instead, we can have the spirit of a son, adoption as sons, that we are children of God, that we are loved by God, we are uh, 
treasured by God. God sees that we are very, very important. So the teaching of the grace of God is very important so that we live in the grace of God, in the love of God, in the freedom of God, and not to live in worry and doubts and pressure and criticism and comparison. We don't want to compare with people. We don't want to compete with people. We want to bless people and accept people. And then we should be motivated by God's love, not motivated by God's law. Now, the, the law of God can motivate us, but the law of God motivates us by telling us if we don't obey, we can face the judgment of God. There can be punishment. And if we uh, follow the flesh, then we can reap corruption. All these are warning. So this is the motivation by the law. But the motivation by God's grace is it's His love. First, uh, 2 Corinthians verse 15, For the love of God, Christ compels us because we just us, that if one died for all, then all died, and He died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for Him who died for them and rose again. So here it says that, that the love of Christ compels us, motivates us, pushes us to serve God. Because Jesus has died, so He died so that we don't live for ourselves, but we live for, those, for Him who died for us. So we should be motivated by the love of God, the grace of God. That's the teaching of the Bible. That we should not be like slaves, and we should not be critical of people and always push us people. We should tell people, God loves you very much, and whatever you, you know, whenever you repent, God is very happy. Whenever you obey Him, God is very happy. When you follow Him, He is very happy. When you bless people, God is very happy. That way, people are motivated by God's grace and not God's law. And, and then people will not be under pressure. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, there are three kinds of prayer that will help us build up the relationship with God. There are many kinds of prayer, but these three are for, for building up the relationship. The first kind of prayer is prayer of grace. So God is, we can pray like this, God is loving me, God is laying His hand upon me, God is pouring His blessing upon me, God has a wonderful plan in my life, God wants to go, do great things in my life. All this is prayer of grace, to declare the grace of God. And every day when we wake up, we can say, God is loving me, God is blessing me. That way we have more joy. But many people wake up and say, Lord, where are you, where are you? I need you, I have many problems then they're always looking at the problem. Instead of looking at the problem, we can look at God's grace and say, God, you want to bless us. You have many blessings ready for me. You want to bless me all the time. And then the second is the prayer of worship, to worship God. Lord, I love you. I worship you. I glorify you. I like you. I depend on you. I need you. All this, Lord, I need you. I want you. I hold on to you. I like you. I appreciate you is worship from us to God. So prayer of grace is from God to us. And prayer of worship is from us to God, that we worship Him. And then interactive prayer, this is based from the Bible. So whenever we love God, we can say, Lord, whenever I love you, you are happy with me and bless me. Now that's biblical, because the Bible says that He will hear a prayer. When I worship you, you are pleased with me and you will respond to my needs and raise me up to a higher level. So the Bible tells us that when we love Him, He will prepare for us things that we have never imagined, and He will use our life mightily. So interactive prayer is holding on to these promises. Whenever we pray to you, you are very happy. Whenever we follow you, you are very happy. Whenever we praise you, you are very happy, and you respond to my prayer. Now these kind of prayers will help us to have confidence. Many people don't have confidence in God. They say, Lord, where are you? Lord, please help me. I'm in big trouble. They're always saying, I'm in big trouble. Please help me. But when we have the love of God, we can say, Lord, I know that when I pray to you, you always respond to me. You're very happy to respond to me. You're very happy to bless me so I can come to you with confidence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I hope you learn this kind of prayer. And I I uh, use this kind of prayers all the time. I will always say, Lord, I love you. And when I say I love you, you really 
like it and you will bless me and you are happy with me all the time. So I'm motivated by God's grace all the time. Okay, now, uh, in the first session, in the first part, I talk about how to apply God's grace in our relationship with God. Now here, I will talk a little bit about apply God's grace and law to people. Now this can be used in our relationship to people. So like God say, God says the word of grace to us all the time. We want to say words of grace to people more. Now words of grace will be like this. I care about you. I love you. I appreciate you. You are precious. Thank you. You are helpful. To so always say things that appreciate people, to show the goodness of people and show how we appreciate them and like them. So these are words of grace and, and we are ready to help you. I want to help you. I want to be a blessing to you. And you have done well. You are great. You have tried very hard. I noticed your improvement. You have impacted my life. You have done great things in my life. You have many gifts and many strengths. And God likes you and God will use you greatly. So all these are saying good things to people, to encourage people, instead of saying negative things to people. And then motivates people to obey God's law by God's grace. Now we want to help people to obey God's law. But we don't want to say, you have to obey. If you don't obey, God will punish you. That is motivation by God's law. I hope you understand this. This is very important. Not to motivate by God's law, but to motivate by God's grace. When you obey God, God is very happy and He will bless you. This is motivation by God's grace. I hope you remember this difference. Many people teach, they even preach like this. You have to preach the gospel. If you don't preach the gospel, God is not happy. It's just saying the law. But we can say, whenever you preach the gospel, even when people don't believe, God is very happy with you and God will remember you and bless you. So I hope that we're all we remember God's grace and motivated by God's grace. That way we live in joy and peace and love and freedom and motivation. So how to motivate people to obey God's law by God's grace. Now, this is what we can say when we preach, when we help people spiritually. God is happy whenever you pray to Him. So pray more to Him because God is very happy and He'll bless you. And God always listens to our prayers. God will listen when you pray, He will listen to you. So we can pray with confidence. We can pray with confidence that God is hearing my prayer. God is responding to my prayer. And God knows your needs before you pray. Before you have, you know, you tell Him what you need. God already knows your need. And He will bless you. And He will reward you when you uh, love Him. When you love God, He will raise you to a higher level. Your life will go higher and higher. So it's it's really rewarding to love God. It's, it's worth it to love God. So that's how we motivate people to love God. When we, you love God, God will raise you up to a high level. And then when you obey God, He will remember your good deeds and will reward you richly. So when you obey God, God will remember your good deeds. When you preach the gospel, when you help people, God is very happy that you do that and He will reward you richly. And then when you help someone, God is very, very happy. When you help someone, that God is always very, very happy. So these are ways to motivate people to obey God's law by God's grace. It's like, if I use an illustration, it's like in a marriage. If in a marriage, the husband tells the wife, you have to cook for me, you have to do this for me. If you don't do it for me, I'll divorce you. Now this is motivation by the law. But instead, the husband can say, when you cook for me, I'm very happy. When I see you doing all these things for me, I'm very happy and I want to love you more. I want to uh, uh, do good things to you and make you happy all the time. I want, you, I want to make you the happiest woman in the world. Now this is motivation by grace to our wives and to our wives, you know, our wives, our wives means every, you know, many people's wives. We only have one wife, but to the wives of many people that that will be nice to them and then they are uh, they will respond to us and they respond in love and also when we talk to our members we always will say well you have done wonderful things you have come early to pray to God and you have uh, helped us in our ministry I'm very happy that you're helping us that way people 
are more motivated to obey God instead of telling them, oh, you are a little late today. Uh, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. Then people just remember what they haven't done. Now, it's true what they haven't done. And when people continue to commit sin, at a certain point, we have to warn them. I'm going to talk about how to motivate people to change using, now, sometimes we have to, to apply the law. Okay, guide people to change by grace. But sometimes when people don't listen, we have to use the law. But first, we guide them by grace. For instance, we, we can say, I would like to have better relationship. I'm sorry, better relationship with you. So, so uh, I want to build up a better relationship with you. So it's saying my motivation, I want you. And do you think we can have a better relationship? So is it possible? And imagine how it will be like when we have a better relationship, how it will be like. And how can we have a better relationship? What can we do? I like it very much when you help me. When you do these things to me, when I cook for me, I like it very much. When you talk to me, I like it very much. So these are ways to change people by grace. So we don't need to remind people of their bad behavior all the time. Now sometimes we need to. We can tell them, uh, uh, I noticed that you've been late many times. Uh, so what are you going to do about that? And can you change? And do you know how that affects us? So sometimes we can say that, but we don't need to say that all the time. And don't accuse them in order to change them. So we don't use accusation to change them and give them positive reinforcement. When they do anything good, we give them positive reinforcement. Now this applies to people who respond to us and are willing to change. And if people are not willing to change, there are two ways. Uh, if that person is someone important to us, that if that person, for instance, is our wife, our husband, our members, and if the person continue to commit sins, for instance, the person continue to chase up the girls, we have to warn them. We have to first ask them. We have to guide them and say, uh, I noticed that you're chasing after girls, and what do you think about that? That's guiding. So what do you think about that? And, and what do you think God will think about that? But if the person continue to do that, then I will start to ask him, what do you think God will think about that? And what do you think God would do that, what would do to you? So do you want to think of repentance? And when people don't repent, we have to warn them. You know, when we sin, it's very, very serious. God can punish us. God can really punish us. But that's the last resort. We don't start with that. We start with guiding people to repentance, guiding people to change. Okay, so... Um, so this is what we have for the first session. And then I will stop here and then, so if anyone here now have questions that you don't understand part of the teaching, what you can do is to um, send me what's up and then I will respond to you right away. And so I give you a little rest. And then if you have questions, send me WhatsApp's message and then I will respond to you to explain more about uh, what we have talked about so far. Now, I summarize it in a very brief way. Many people live under the law, even Christians. They always say, I have to do this, I have to do that, or to compare to other people or compete with people and say, you didn't do it, you didn't do it well, you're, you're, you're not good, you're not a good Christian, and saying things like that. That is not what God wants us to do. And that is also living under the law, and also that's putting the law on people, putting burdens on people. But we should live under the grace of God, to say God loves me, and He's very happy to bless me. Whenever I come to Him, He's very happy. He wants to bless me. He wants to do great things in my life so I can enjoy Him. I can, uh, when I come to Him, He's very happy to bless me. And when I love Him, He prepares for me things I never imagined. So, we can always believe in God's grace and then we can have a uh, prayer of grace. You are loving me, you are blessing me, you are with me all the time and prayer of worship. I worship you, I love you, I like you and prayer, uh, interactive prayer that you are always responding to me when I pray. Thank you Lord, you are always responding to me when I pray to you. 
Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful blessings. Hallelujah. And then we can all relax because God is happy with us whenever we follow God. Whenever we follow the right direction, even when we don't do well enough, we are following the right direction that God is very happy with us. Now, God is not happy with people who are proud, who competes, who criticize people, who cut people down, who hurts people. God is not happy with that. But whenever we repent and want to do things according to God's way, God is always very happy. So we can have confidence that when I follow God, God is very happy and God will bless me and God will remember everything I do. Then we can live under grace and be a relaxed Christian. So I have a book that I've written in Chinese and I, I, uh, now th this teaching here is part of the book and uh, in English it's called Joyful Victory. So we can have victory in joy and also in relaxation. In Chinese it, it's joy, uh, victory in relaxation, that we can relax and enjoy God and have victory. So now we do follow the law when we have the grace of God, but we follow the law, our motivation by love with a relaxed heart and we know that God is always happy with us. So I hope we all learn to use words of grace on people, always say good things, always motivate people and appreciate people so people feel good about God. They always think of God as a kind father, a kind father who appreciates everything we do for him, a kind father who wants to bless us all the time. So let us close with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you are loving God. You are full of grace and mercy and kindness and goodness. You always want to bless us. And when we come to you, you always want to bless us. And you always, you're full of grace. You see all the good things we have done for you and you are happy with that. So we have full confidence in you. We can trust in you. We can relax in you. And the grace of God can motivate us to love you more, to follow you more, to obey you more. Thank you, Father. You are such a loving God. We can relax in you. And with your love, we want to obey you more. We want to glorify you more. And we want to bless people. And whenever we bless people, you're very happy with us. Whenever we glorify you, you're very happy. So give us the motivation to love you and love people. And help us to be relaxed Christians and always giving the grace of God to people and not to push people or to hurt people or to give pressure to people, but to give people wonderful grace. Hallelujah. Thank, praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want to conclude with one point. Some people say if we motivate people with the grace of God, people don't follow. People don't obey. Now there are people, always people who don't obey. But if, we, if they have a heart of God, if they are more changed by God, when they hear that God is happy with them, when they follow God, they will have the motivation to change. If people, we tell them, God loves you and God wants to use your life and whatever you do, whatever you do for Him, He's very happy. And people don't take that seriously. They don't have a real heart for God. Then these people, is hard to change. And what happens is they will suffer more because of the sins. But if we, you know, Use the love of God to motivate people. God is happy with you, everything you do. Some people will be very motivated to serve God and love God more and love people more. So this is motivation by the grace of God. We notice that in the Bible is full of motivation by the grace of God instead of motivation by the law. But the law tells us what to do. Hallelujah. God